what's it do psychologically to you when you retire? Do you plan for that? I mean, we plan financially, hopefully. But what about psychologically? You don't have a place to go every day now. Do you feel like you're worth anything? Do you feel like, well, they used to need me, now they don't? Joining us now, as always, on Tuesday about this time, Dr. John Braccio, Regional Psychological Services, over to drjohnb.com, and it's our segment called, Hey, what's up, Doc? Dr. John Braccio, hey, buddy, how you doing? Well, I'm doing good, Mike. Good talking to you. And this is a topic certainly impacting people, more and more people every day. You know, I've learned in my work as a psychologist over the decades that persons, when getting ready to retire, they often do it with planning about their physical and financial conditions. Now, without a doubt, these really are important areas to evaluate when you consider retirement. The problem is, too often persons don't think about what the impact retirement will have on them psychologically. For example, a job is more than something a person simply spends time at. They don't know a job impacts a person's self-esteem, friendships, and the image to all persons they meet and interact with. Being a farmer, a psychologist, a bookkeeper, a physician, a governmental worker, factory worker, radio broadcaster, whatever, whatever. It's a major part of who a person is. When they retire, they become a retired person, and persons see them as such. This can be fine for many people. People like to say, I'm retired, I'm retired. But for many others, no, they didn't realize the importance that their job had on them in relation to status, and levels of friendship every day, levels of authority, and the constant interaction and challenges in the workplace. You know, one needs to prepare for such a radical change in their lives. And even persons who didn't like their job, we see this a lot too, but they can miss relationships and interactions that were meaningful to them on a day-to-day basis. And I've known persons and worked with many persons who were just not prepared for the significant changes that occur. Okay, The golden retirement years, we hear that a lot, don't we? The yeah, golden right. retirement years, Mike. Wow. Yeah. Well, they, and for many it is, but for many others it can be depressing, lonely, and demoralizing when the person feels isolated, bored, and even without purpose. This can even make a person feel guilty at their failure to feel fulfilled with their retirement. And I've talked to people where that's true. They they retired and they're saying, you know, Dr. Brasher or John Brasher, depending on our relationship, they'll say, you know, I just, just um, losing so much. You know, I just get up. I'm just watching the days go by. I don't have anything planned, nothing going on. Then a recent AARP study found 57% of retired persons say they had not prepared psychologically for retirement. So so what do you do? I mean, what, right. what do you do to, to get ready for retirement? It's not that I want you to retire or anything like well, okay. You're not no, and you're not speaking from uh, from example because you're still working, man. How hey, I'm not going to ask you, Ed. You've told me before, but I mean, come on. Well, well, I'll tell you, I'm going to be 80 on Friday, and I've never felt better, and I've never thought a day of retirement. Okay, so mm-hmm. I think what you want to do don't make age be the determinant on retirement. Okay, you want to make retirement be when you're ready, when you want to retire. Now, if you don't have a choice then what you have to do, you have to be working with some of the things here, like make sure you do want to do it, you know, and see if you're ready. Right. And, and if you're kind of pushed into retirement, some people are, that doesn't mean you can't do something different, okay? And again, as I just mentioned, you don't want to use age as the primary determinant. And then you want to see retirement when you get ready for it as a, as a new phase of your life with new goals and challenges. That becomes an important thing. I've mentioned before that Ted Williams, a great baseball player, went from being a great baseball player to be one of the great bass fishermen in the world. So, you know, you, uh-huh. you look for something else to do, and you can look for dreams. What what dreams do you have? New dreams to be fulfilled. Why not? Why not? Why not have some dreams are always a wonderful thing to have. And then you can join new groups. You can rekindle old friendships. And then another key thing that for people to do is enhance family and spousal relationships. Too often over the years with working, people and raising kids or whatever they're doing, they kind of lose track of themselves. Or people don't keep track of family members or old friendships, whatever it might be. But with retirement, you've got time. And then another thing to do, if if there are some educational or vocational goals or things you want to complete, do it. Go go do it. 
and, and then also you if you if you're really not sure before or even if after retirement things aren't going well you want to meet with a therapist experienced in dealing with marital the mental health of persons preparing to retire as well as those who are retired and then finally i think further develop your sense of spirituality and purpose of life so if you're going to retire and particularly as people now often live 10 20 30 40 years after retirement it is really important to plan out, you know, what are you going to do? Who am I? What's my purpose in life? And what am I going to do now? Because just, you know, sitting in the backyard, um, moving to Florida or moving to the UP or doing something that you maybe wanted to move to or do or stay where you are, you do want, you do have to have things to do. You need to have things that keep you, keep your mind going, things that really can excite you. Just um, doing nothing is really can get tiring for for anybody along the way. It may sound funny because so many people that could be listening to us or people we talk say, you know, just love to retire. That's what I want. I want to get out <laughs> there. And, and well, you know, that is a good goal. There's nothing with that. But then what are you going to do? You know, what, what, what happens? What about those friendships, those people you saw, those challenges you had every day to complete, meeting new people, just, um, you know, meeting and having coffee in the morning or whatever it might be, and all of a sudden, there you are not prepared. And boy, does this happen a lot, Mike. It happens so much yeah. more than you might think. So don't join that group. Be prepared, not just physically, financially, but also prepare yourself psychologically for the changes it's going to make in your life. And I, I would say probably just the overall thing, don't you think, Doc, is just having a purpose. We need purpose. to know that we yeah. are making a difference in whatever. We're doing something. We're productive. I think that's really true. You know, I think ultimately we want the world better when we leave it than when we came in. And what is our purpose? What, what, what who do we help? What do we do? What have we brought? I mean, what, what, what is there? Like, I'll just say what's what our you're worth? Doing every, yeah. What, yeah. And, and what you do every day, you know, you, you do, bring people together, you present ideas, you have some humor in what you do, which I think is a great strength. And yeah. it's helping people, gets people going in the morning. So that's one thing you're doing. You also have a family, you have friends. So that's what you're trying to do. And everybody has, and I'm sure many other things, but it is, it is really important to have a purpose. Why are you here? What do you, why do you think you're here? You know, these are, these are, you know, key things and, and trying to enjoy each day that you have, you know, live each day as if it's your last, you know, Mario Alonso, the great singer from long ago used to say that anything, anything he ever sang, he sang it as if it was the last song he was ever going to sing and always loved wow. to live life at the high sea. You know, you, you, you do want to, Find some, you know, a song, you know, with a, a, a song in my heart, another one, just things to kind of keep you going, keep you fired up. And when you're retired, you don't, that's not an ending. It's the beginning of something new. They see that a new horizon, a new hill to be, to be, to be climbed. And just a lot of people see it as an end. Like, yep, yeah, once I get to January that day, I'm, I'm going to get my gold watch and I'm going to get this um, commendation <laughs> and then I'm going to. Just do nothing. Well, you know, nothing can really feel like nothing. <laughs> so you really right. do have to. Yeah. Well, you're going to sit and work. watch Westerns all day? You can't do that. <laughs> you know, you're talking right. about singing. This is just a, just a funny aside, and then we have to go. But my son, my youngest son, Joseph, cannot carry a tune in a bucket. And he's, he's not <laughs> listening this morning. So, but he sings. And early on, I, t I told my wife, I said, boy, that's just, that's hard. She said, but he's singing. Let him blow it out. Yeah. yeah. And so we encouraged <laughs> that and still do. And he still can't carry a tune. But boy, that boy can sing. He sings loud. Hey, Doc, we're up on time. Dr. John Braccio, mentally preparing yourself for retirement. Find him at drjohnb.com. Doc, have a great week. Thank you so much. Same, same to you, my friend. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. 1320 WILS back in just a minute.